Well, hi everybody, and uh, hey, we're not in my shop at all right now. We're actually in another part of my house because of the size of this big thing you see. It's a big console stereo, and that's what I'm going to be working on next. So first, let me show you just a couple of cool things about it. straightforward. It's an AM and an FM tuner. A bunch of buttons for remote speakers and things like that. This is a off phono tape AM and FM selector. And then a dual uh, 1015 turntable. Ooh. How do you like that, eh? Very good. Well, that seemed pretty good. A little surprising it came on there. I wasn't expecting that. Okay. Well, let's let's turn it on. You can see the AM side is lit up. Hmm. Okay. I'll try tuning it. Doesn't want to tune at all. Pretty boring radio station there. Let's try FM. Oh. You get almost nothing out of one side of it here. Of the right side, it gets balanced. And I can't tune it. Yeah, the turntable is still spinning. And that tells me the lubrication is really good in that turntable. Well, button stereo well <laughs> okay so let's give it a let's give the record player a chance there Okay, here it goes. Not too bad. A little bit of trouble with the mechanism there. Uh, I don't think there's any needle in this uh, cartridge, so it's not going to play, obviously. So, a few things to do here. So, let's uh, take the back off here.
just take a look at that. So Electrohome is a well-known Canadian manufacturer of uh, mid-price, mid-quality, maybe higher-end, mid-quality uh, home stereo equipment uh, out of the 60s and 70s. Very, very popular here in Canada. Lots of people have Electrohome uh, stuff in their uh, houses. So, uh, and, and a lot of Electrohome stuff is great big console stereos like the one in front of us here. So let's see what we found. Let me just get comfortable here. <laughs> okay, so uh, looks like some inputs here. And these look like speaker outputs. Since I have the cover off, I, I can't read the words. There are lots of wires inside there. Hey, look at this. That was missing from the record player up, up above. Huh, there it is down here. That's the uh, uh, center part for records to go on. Um, exactly how to get this out is my next challenge, of course. How much of it has to come out? Well, that's great. There's a diagram. Looks like it's explaining the different uh, plugs on the back and how they're connected. That's what it looks like. And uh, no easy way into the uh, back from the back underneath the. Um, record player, but there shouldn't be any need for that. I should be able to do everything from above. And I don't see that any of these panels come off in any way. There's a big speaker port for a resonating port. Very good. And the actual amplifier here. A little awkward for me to see right in this position, but uh, as usual, these are fairly nicely built uh, machines. So and that's a little odd. I don't know why there's a wire with all the insulation off here. I don't know what's up with that. Oh, lots of components in behind here. It's not just a panel, it's got a lot of parts. Huh. Okay. Well, I'll see if I can get it. Just taking a closer look at how to remove this. Way down here on the floor, I look up. And there's the output trans transistors. I had the two of these have tape on them. I don't know why that would be. There's the various plugs for speakers and stuff. So, Got to be coming back from the phono. So pull all those out. And I think this stereo goes up, up and out the top. A couple of screws down here to take out. I think that's all. I think that's all that's holding. Here's the uh, look like antenna connections. This is probably a ground. This one here, coming back from the uh, phono. That's AM and that'll be FM up there. Here's the FM antenna itself. It's just laid right around. Right on the back here. There okay, so I've just taken off these wires, and I'm thinking this is the ground coming back from the record player, and this is the antenna. Yet the connection points down here actually say A for antenna, where I think the ground is, and G, where I think the antenna is. Hmm. Very wonder. large connector back here. That's for all the speaker connections coming up into this panel, which looks like it has crossover circuitry in it. And these various outputs. So outputs here, inputs there. So I just have to separate this connector, and uh, I think this thing's ready to come out. Well, this turns out to be pretty challenging. I've gotten three holding screws out of it, two up in the bottom. One, I'm really lucky to even see it, way up in here. 
And I got those three screws out, and this thing is still rock solid in here. Rock solid. There's no, no movement in it at all. Nothing. So I'm starting to think that somehow I've got to get this bezel off the front. And then there's some screws hidden underneath. So how do I get this off? How do I get this cover off? Hmm. Well, I'm guessing there's screws coming up from below. <laughs> Um, and there are lots of screws, but some of them are not very accessible. I'm really not inclined to start loosening them all. So, I'm not sure what to think. I'm kind of starting to get there. This has come a little bit loose now. There was a sudden pop. You know, I think it was just stuck. You know, just stuck in every place possible. And once I put in a force on it, it's, it's come loose. It's the, I think it's right. I took out uh, the three primary holding screws. It didn't seem to loosen it at all. And I've taken out three more or four more small screws. Not really thinking they're holding it in, but I don't know what else to do. After taking out those screws, I checked it for looseness, and while I was wiggling it, the chassis, there was a nice, loud, cracky sound of something becoming unstuck. So I think I'm going to be able to pull it out now, so let's, let's give it a try. Take a look inside. Okay, so I'm not sure what's going on with my video here. But let me just show you something. Can you see what's down inside there? It's a whole pile of pine needles. Way in behind here. Okay, so here it comes. That console stereo. Here it is, down in my shop. Ugh. What a beast. I had quite a challenge getting this out, as you saw. And uh, the biggest challenge with it was. It was just stuck in place. I mean, it's been sitting in there for, what, 50 years? No one's ever taken it out, so I released, or I took out the three holding screws, and this thing was not moving one bit. And I've taken out three more screws unnecessarily, at least at this point, unnecessarily, until I finally got this thing to crack loose out of the big console cabinet, and here it is. You know, these things are really cool. Um, I think they're kind of cool because they can be reinstalled into almost anything that's big enough and, you know, has the right kind of opening in that. But uh, you could do a lot of things with one of these. Um, if the uh, cabinet itself is just simply too big or too rough or smashed up, this this might still be of some value to somebody if they want to mess around with it. So, And I love the look of this thing. I love these round circles kind of gives you sort of a radar kind of instrument sort of look to it so uh, what I need to do down here though is I need to get this guy connected to some speakers and uh, turn them on and, and start finding out why why we can't turn this any farther stuff like that so that's what I'll attend to so uh, thanks for watching so far.